When the news circulated over the weekend that there's a new remix of Ubuntu available featuring the Cinnamon desktop environment, I knew I just had to take a look at this one. In fact, I've already gone ahead and written the ISO image to this flash drive right here and we're going to be checking it out. Now how cool is that? To have a remix of Ubuntu featuring Cinnamon and you might be wondering what remix actually means. All that means is that this is not an official flavor of Ubuntu, at least not yet. There's an official process you have to go through to be adopted into the Ubuntu family of distributions. I'm hoping that this project is a success and the lead developer is able to make that happen. But until then, in this video, we're going to check out the Cinnamon Remix of Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so moment of truth, I'm gonna power on my laptop. I'm going to be installing this and running it from actual hardware. And here at the BIOS screen, I'm just going to activate the boot menu. And then we'll select the flash drive. Let's see what happens. All right, so first of all, I see that they don't have a custom boot splash just yet, but that's fine. They're just getting started. And here we are. Here is the default desktop of the Ubuntu Cinnamon Remix. See we have what looks like a neon colored uh, wallpaper here which is pretty interesting. We have a logo right here and actually an icon which is pretty cool though you know it might change if this becomes an official flavor but let's go ahead and check this out. So let's check out the theme. I'll open up the file manager. And by default, we can see we have a dark theme with orange highlights and orange icons, which is pretty cool. Now, it's not my favorite color, to be honest, but it does look decent, especially for a project that's just getting started. But the first question that I have is whether or not there are other themes that I can change to if the color scheme isn't really to my liking. So let's check that out. So I'll click on the menu, go here to system settings, and then themes. Let's see what we're able to change. So if I click on icons here, I have some options here. I could change to a light theme, for example. Let's go ahead and see the difference. So that changed the icons. But I don't have nearly as many options here as I would have in Linux Mint. And Linux Mint is an impossible comparison to avoid because they are also built on the Ubuntu platform and also offer a cinnamon desktop. More on that later. Go ahead and change it back for now. Let's check out the controls. Do we have themes for that? And you know what? Not really. We have a couple of default choices here, but they don't really have much in the way of themes just yet. Again, this project is just getting started, so I do understand that. And window borders, we have a light and a dark theme. So in regards to theming and also Linux Mint, Linux Mint itself is not my daily driver because that distribution just doesn't resonate with me. But one thing that I love about it is that it has a lot of choices when it comes to themes. So that's one downside here is that we don't really have much of a selection of themes just yet. But again, the project is just getting started. So hopefully we get more choices as the project matures. And while we're here, let's go ahead and see what applications come default with this remix of Ubuntu. I'll click on the menu. Let's see, under accessories, we have a few of the usual suspects here. We do have a text editor, for example. But you know, it's a text editor, Pluma. Definitely a decent choice, for sure. We also have a calculator. and even an archive manager to manage zip files or compressed archives. Under education, we have LibreOffice Math, which is just part of the LibreOffice suite. Games, we have a few choices here, like chess, for example. So that's pretty cool. And then for graphics, we have GIMP, definitely a good choice. We have a scanner utility here, so I'll go ahead and click on it, which one is this? And I guess this one's okay. I generally prefer simple scan, but I'm not really familiar with this and I don't actually have a scanner. But if you do have a scanner, it's good to know that we do actually have 
a program here to handle that. So back to the menu. So here we have photos. I don't have any photos on this computer right now, but we do have several applications for handling that kind of thing, which is pretty cool. Under internet, we have Firefox as our default browser and Thunderbird as the default mail client. Two of my favorite choices. That's actually what I use. I use Firefox and Thunderbird, so definitely glad to see those here. Under Office, of course, we have LibreOffice, which is the default Office suite on quite a majority of distributions nowadays. And it's what I've written my books in. Now, we don't really have much in the way of theming for LibreOffice here, so it kind of looks out of place to me. So that might be one edge case to fix, but you know, LibreOffice is a great choice, so it's pretty nice to have that installed by default. Sound and video, we have GNOME MPV, which is what I actually use for viewing video files, so that's a good choice. We have some administration utilities, so it's interesting that we have HTOP installed. It's actually a command line utility, but it is my favorite utility for monitoring system resources on my Linux machine. So, you know, that's installed for me. One less thing for me to do. Of course, we have a terminal and we have what looks like GNOME software. Am I right? And I am. Let's go shopping. It looks like we have a error right here, which is probably because it's not installed. So I'm going to go ahead and install it and we'll check that out in just a moment. So I'll click on the menu and where is it? I'll just type install. Oh, there it is. Click on that. You know, and this is an interesting surprise. I was actually expecting to see Ubuntu's installer just maybe rebranded. This looks like the Calamari's installer, which is fine. Let's go ahead and proceed through and see what this looks like. So I'll leave the default there for the language. I'll just move that dot closer to Michigan there. There we go. I'm just going to accept all the defaults basically. I'm going to erase the entire disk. And we have an option to encrypt, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to see how that works. I'm just going to choose that and then I'll type in a passphrase here. Nothing advanced, just keep it simple. And it crashed. Well, that's not good. Let's go ahead and try that again. Not sure what happened there. I'll choose to encrypt it. Hopefully it doesn't crash this time. And as soon as I type my password in the second time, it crashed. So that's interesting. So let's see what happens if I choose not to encrypt it. I'll erase the disk. Type in my user info. All right, good enough. Next. Giving me a quick summary. And let's go ahead and do it. Let's install it. And you know what's strange is that I'm not able to get this installed. I told it to wipe out my disk, which currently has CentOS installed on it because I just did a CentOS tutorial and it's not able to wipe the disk even though I told it to, which that's not a good sign. So I'm not able to actually get this installed, unfortunately, which, uh, you know, that's a bummer, but you know, it is a new project. So it looks like they do have some rough edges to work through. But even though I'm not able to get it installed, well, you know, I guess it does look like it's shaping up to be a decent release. Maybe in a future version, it'll stabilize, I'll be able to install it, but it is great to have a cinnamon edition of Ubuntu in the works. So this is a first impressions video. So what are my opinions? First of all, I think it's awesome that we have a cinnamon remix of Ubuntu. Now, to be fair, 
Linux Mint already offers a Cinnamon Edition with Ubuntu as its base. But for those of us that, you know, we don't want to run Linux Mint for one reason or another, and we want to align closer to the Ubuntu platform, it's great to have an alternative, and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it installed, so while I think this is a great idea, it just seems to me like the project has a few rough edges to work through, which of course is to be expected when a project is just getting off the ground. Now, I'm going to continue to look at this one, and maybe I'll do a review in the future when the project stabilizes, but I'm cautiously optimistic for this one because this is something that I've always wanted to be the case. I basically wanted something for people that don't want to run Linux Mint for some reason or another to be able to have an option on standard Ubuntu for a Cinnamon desktop. I mean, let's face it, even Debian has a Cinnamon desktop option, and now Ubuntu does as well. So I wish this project success. Like I mentioned, I'll keep looking at it. But so far, you know, it's coming along pretty decently for being a brand new project. So what do you guys think of the Cinnamon Remix of Ubuntu if you've had a chance to check it out? Let me know your opinions in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.